Caffeine is considered to be the most frequently taken drug in the world. Yes, it is a pharmacologically active substance, hence termed as a drug. It is found in common beverages, in products containing chocolate or cocoa, and in medications. The coffee, tea, and soft drinks, which are an obvious part of your meal, contain a considerable amount of caffeine. Being a part of our daily diet, it increases our interest to know more about caffeine. Do you take coffee? How many cups a day? Hello viewers, welcome to Social Tomatoes. In today's video, you will be given a complete guide for your caffeine consumption. Watch till the end so you may get that either you should discontinue or should keep on taking caffeine in your diet. Caffeine actually changes the way the brain and body work. The literature suggests that the following effects on the behavior of adult humans may occur when individuals consume moderate amounts of caffeine, which is 300 milligrams per day. For better understanding, we may say that one tablespoon can keep 150 grams of coffee, which contains 150 to 180 milligrams of caffeine. Hence, two tablespoons a day can meet your daily demand for coffee, and this quantity is of prime importance. Caffeine increases alertness and reduces fatigue. It improves performance on vigilance. It reduces your weight. A 75 milligram serving of caffeine is enough to increase attention and alertness. Caffeine can improve physical performance during endurance exercise. It reduces headache by narrowing the blood vessels and reducing blood flow in the brain and is used in pain relief medicines. Research from John Hopkins University suggests that a dose of caffeine after a learning session may help boost long-term memory. Researchers have found that lifelong caffeine consumption in a moderate manner may reduce the risk of developing Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. In contrast to the effects of caffeine consumption, withdrawal of caffeine has a few effects on my performance. There is often an increase in negative mood following the withdrawal of coffee. We are well familiar with the fact that excess of everything is bad, hence acutely administered caffeine modestly increases blood pressure, plasma catecholamine levels, plasma renin levels, serum-free fatty acid levels, urine production, and gastric acid secretion. It alters the mood and sleep patterns of normal volunteers. Use of more caffeine reverses all its beneficial effects. It has been estimated that in a typical year, Americans consume nearly 1 billion kilograms of coffee. And in children, soft drinks represent 55% of the total caffeine intake. Chocolate foods and beverages represent 35 to 40%, and tea represents 6 to 10%. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, recommends a maximum intake of 400 milligrams a day, or two to three cups of coffee but it's preferred to not exceed two cups a day. Caffeine may harm the pregnancy, fertility, glucose control, and other aspects of health. Energy drinks can contain high levels of caffeine, but are unlikely to be hazardous unless consumed with alcohol. Some studies highlight the potentially harmful effects of caffeine. One of them is depression. A high caffeine intake may worsen symptoms of anxiety. Yikes! Studies have suggested that for pregnant women, more than 300 milligrams a day of caffeine, or the amount equal to around three cups of coffee, could lead to loss of pregnancy, delayed fetal growth, abnormal fetal heart rhythm. So, women should limit caffeine intake to 200 milligrams or less during pregnancy. For fertility, caffeine reduces a woman's chances of becoming pregnant by about 27%. An additional intake of caffeine may trigger a gout attack in people. Consuming caffeine three or even six hours before bedtime can significantly disrupt sleep, so never go near coffee if you intend to sleep. Caffeine's main effect on the body is an increased temporary sense of wakefulness and alertness, but it can also cause uncomfortable symptoms. Consuming over 400 milligrams of caffeine a day can lead to several adverse effects. Disrupted sleep, fast or uneven heartbeat, high blood pressure, headaches, dizziness, 
dependency, dehydration, heartburn, stomach upset, sweating, cardiac arrest, and this list never seems to end. This shows that only a slight increase in the daily requirement can worsen the impacts. Following the death of two young men from an overdose of pure caffeine sold over the internet, the FDA urges to avoid pure powdered caffeine. Let's have a look at some of the myths about caffeine that we hear every day. Is caffeine addictive? Scientists' answer to that is that caffeine is not an addictive substance. Can caffeine weaken your bones? Caffeine may affect the way the body absorbs calcium, but it does not cause osteoporosis, weakening of your bones. Hence, a good calcium diet is recommended if you take coffee. Hence, women with a good intake of calcium through their diet are unlikely to be at risk of osteoporosis as a result of drinking coffee. For more health benefits, do not forget to click the red button below to subscribe to Social Tomatoes and the bell icon so you are assured to get notified for essential and worthy information about your health.